Nine challengers from the arena walk along the sidewalk as they move closer and closer to Invoke's position atop a five-story building. With a thrill of chaotic serenity beckoning, Invoke holds back her attack in favor of a decision to learn more. Invoke widens her eyes in an attempt to focus on the Nine's energy signatures. At first, she looks for patterns to determine how their bodies control themselves to navigate the world. Through repetition, she sees the source of all their energies comes from their heads and then flows out to the different extremities. So far, they appear to work the same way that the champion works, so she assumes that if she can move all their heads quickly enough, then the burden of defeat would not be hers to bear. So far, the obvious solution is still the most likely one, but nine at once sounds very difficult. Invoke keeps her desire at bay to listen to everything around her. She closes her eyes to focus on the sounds around her. She can't pick out each individual challenger by sound, but she can at least tell where they are and which way that they're going. She doesn't hear anything other than challengers as they arrive just below Invoke on the sidewalk. She listens and listens for a couple minutes without hearing anything other than the group of challengers. But then, an additional source is heard from about 20 feet behind her. She immediately turns to face the sound to find the familiar energy signature of a translucent warrior sneaking toward her. Invoke cannot see its body in the darkness, but she can still see its flow of energy as it converts the creeping movements into an aggressive lunge after realizing that it has been spotted. Using what little she remembers about the warriors from the arena, Invoke decides to leap up into the air to try to land on the incoming assailant. The warrior expectantly lands just below Invoke as she lets gravity pull her back toward the ground. The translucent warrior ends up landing thighs and belly first because it didn't consider failure in its lunge. It went all in and missed its mark. Fortunately, as Invoke's right foot lands with a forceful stomp, the warrior's neck manages to slip away from her violent landing, only to feel its neck get annihilated by Invoke's left foot. A sharp cry of pain is emitted from the warrior's mouth along with its last breath. At the same time, a beam of energy grazes Invoke's cheek. Invoke instinctively ducks back below the roof's wall, while a tingling sensation circulates through Invoke's right cheek. She feels her cheek become numb and unresponsive. Concern builds as she looks carefully behind her to try to see where the beam came from. She also touches her cheek with her hand to prove that she has indeed lost the sense of touch on her cheek. Invoke can only see a new energy signature in the distance, but cannot make out any physical form from her current location on the other side of the road. Invoke estimates that this other entity is at least 100 feet away from her. In a quick decision to test the waters, Invoke throws the head of the disemboweled translucent warrior at this other entity to see how it will react. She tries to stay as low profile as possible to try to avoid another shot to the face or other vital points. The head flies straight toward the entity, it even gets close enough to make contact with it. But instead of seeing it recoil from the hit, it appears that the entity simply caught it without issue. Invoke smirks with pleasure as she decides that she must spar with that thing. To her surprise, the world becomes illuminated in front of her eyes. She then turns her head to look behind her to try to see where the light is coming from. But she doesn't see anything emitting light onto her. In that moment, she realizes that the light is coming from her own eyes, allowing her to see things much clearer a couple of feet in front of her. Invoke looks at the dead warrior's body while fiddling internally with her eyes until she can figure out how to control the amount of light being emitted from her eyes. She comes to the conclusion that she can produce enough light to clearly see about five or six feet away from her. Wow, this is amazing! Invoke proclaims with awe. While in awe, Invoke notices the damage she did to the roof when she stepped on the warrior's neck. She sees that she easily made an about three inch deep footprint on the rooftop. 
Her plan of attack has been inspired with this new information. She tests her plans by punching the roof real hard to find that her fist does indeed go most of the way through the roof without hurting her arm. It stung, but it didn't hurt. Invoke smiles with confidence as her plan of attack is formed. She visualizes herself sneaking up on the entity from below and striking it down with much ferocity. Not exactly a blow-for-blow blow sparring match, but kill or be killed doesn't exactly merit pulling punches. Time to convert fantasy into reality. To start, Invoke grabs the rest of the translucent corpse and prepares to do a low-profile hammer throw at the end of the entity. She steps away from the wall a bit to improve her trajectory, and with a quick lateral spin of her body, Invoke sends the corpse into the direction of the unknown entity while immediately and stealthily slipping over the roof wall so she can return to street level and thus get underneath the entity. While still conscious of the challenger's distant presence, she does not look in their direction. Invoke believes that checking up on the location is not important, and that the distraction may even alert them to her current location as she runs across the street to get inside the five-story building ahead of her. She quickly leaps up to an open window on the fifth floor in several successive jumps, while also noticing that the entity didn't move during her advance. So either the corpse didn't collide with the entity, or the entity didn't bother with the flying corpse. After landing inside the building, she penetrates some of the darkness with her new headlights to see... dust-coated furniture and decorations. It looks like a place where someone lived at some point, but like the stadium, it looks like no one has been here in a long, long time. None of the furnishings look familiar to invoke, but then... Nothing in this world has felt familiar, well, except fighting. She leaves the room through the doorless doorway into a hallway while keeping her eyes transfixed on the entity's energy signature. Invoke goes from dusty hallway to dusty hallway as she gets closer to the entity's location. Doored and doorless rooms appear every 20 or so feet on each side of the hallways until she finally arrives below the unknown entity. Her excitement builds as she bends down into a squat-like, pounce-ready stance with the fires of unwavering aggression fueling her body with a focused, destructive power. Seeing no change in the entity's energy signature while her breath slows to just the right pace, she launches herself arm-first into and through the 12-foot ceiling above her. Her arm plows through the building materials and deep into the entity's flesh, blood, bone and organs with meager resistance. Just before Invoke's fist reaches the entity's head, her momentum stops completely, forcing Invoke's body to crash into it, crumple up, and then hang from the entity's powerful, clenching, shredded, and torn torso muscles. Before she can recover from this painful and abrupt stop, the entity rolls backward to launch Invoke high into the night sky. She flies across the remaining portion of the current building and over the next street, and then falls onto the next five-story building's roof. Invoke is reeling in physical and mental pain as she desperately tries to compose herself. She can't see any of the challengers and can only see that the unknown entity is either just laying there or slowly crawling toward her as Invoke struggles to recover from this unexpected throw. After an internal and external examination of her own body, she finds that the arm she punched with is dislocated in the shoulder, causing her intense pain, but otherwise just a lot of sore muscles. Phew. Phew. The permanent damage, says Invoke, along with a sigh of relief and the renewing vigor to finish the fight. With a few intuition-driven tweaks, Invoke locates her shoulder into its proper position as she slowly returns to her feet. She decides to take a slower return route. Being ever vigilant of a surprise guests, Invoke eventually returns to the unknown entity without encountering any challengers. She keeps her distance in order to avoid any more of those flying lessons from the entity. She finally gets to take a look at the entity and find that it has a bipedal human form with two arms and two legs and has a surprisingly basic female-shaped physique that doesn't look muscular 
or fat or even powerful. This female looking at he has tan skin, red eyes, blue shoulder length hair, and this weird mask that covers her mouth, nose, and neck. In addition to the mask, it is wearing some damaged navy blue and brown colored leather armor on its torso and legs, but like Invoke, its feet are bare. Unlike Invoke, it has very long toes. Its energy signature is much more faded than it was before, and a large pool of blood surrounds its body. Invoke can clearly see that the punch that she hit it with tore its torso asunder from the crotch all the way to the chest. All of its organs are visible in the darkness of night under the reflective light pouring out of Invoke's eyes. When comparing her own muscular physique to the entity's slim and plain looking physique, Invoke cannot comprehend how it could have thrown her so far and with so much velocity. Invoke deduces that the entity has only about half as much mass as she does. That said, she has no doubt that it could have killed her just as easily as she killed it. That mask is quite weird, thinks Invoke, as she sees the entity's energy signature fade into nothing. Seemingly dead, Invoke decides that it is okay for her to take a closer look at this unknown being. She touches the metallic face mask to find it to be cold and smooth to the touch. Invoke finds that she can dent the mask, but it strangely feels like she needs to apply a lot more force to the mask than she did to the roof to damage it. Putting her ear closer to the opening in the mask where she thinks that the entity would speak and breathe out of, she can't hear any breathing or even any sounds at all. Moving on to its face, Invoke finds the skin to be very soft and squishy, much more malleable than her own. Invoke's skin is very tough, hard, and has a rough texture to it. As Invoke is feeling her sturdy skin, she notices a reflection in the entity's mask. There's words in my arm? Invoke questions her state of being. With some adjustment, she reads the statement, Chaos is Serene, tattooed on her left deltoid, which connects her arm to the rest of her well-built body. That is weird, but I like it. It's so true. The serenity of chaos is the best feeling. Deeply, she stares, looking for any insight into who or what this thing was or is. Suddenly, Invoke registers heat coming from the entity. Before she can understand what is happening, the entity's body becomes a flash of white light and then disappears high to the sky, like a firework of pure light. As Invoke recovers from the flash of light, she finds that the entity is gone. No body, just the structural damage she did to the roof when she killed it. What? Invoke exclaims in total confusion as she eventually readjusts to the darkness of night. Stirred and unsettled, she could not find any help in understanding why the entity's corpse just vanished. She watches and waits for about an hour, but finds nothing more than waning hope. She decides to retire for the remains of the night by sleeping on the roof so that she will be awakened by any nearby threats. Invoke uses the uncomfortable cement roof as a bed to get whatever rest she can. Good night, crazy world. I welcome whatever tomorrow will bring. Invoke proclaims to herself before nodding off.